You know, they only brought three charges against him to crucify him. One, they said, this man loves sinners. The second, he healed on the Sabbath day. And the third, he claimed to be the Son of God. Yes, they laid him away in a tomb. And when they went out to the tomb that morning, they heard the greatest news the world has ever known. He is not here. He is risen. He's alive. He is not here. Death could not hold him. He has conquered the grave. That's the greatest news the world has ever heard. He's a living savior. He's alive! Angela 
and um, I decided to sign up for the bereavement course um, after the loss of my grandparents who played a really significant role in my upbringing. I did the bereavement course a few years ago because my dad had um, passed away not long before. After very suddenly losing my dad, I felt very alone in my grief. I was very nervous about joining the bereavement course, but it reassured me that everything I was thinking and feeling was normal. She was a trained bereavement counsellor and very empathetic with people's situations and, and where they are on their journeys. When the course started, everything was extremely raw to me, but watching the videos and talking each week gave me great comfort and helped me so much. For me, it was good to learn that there is no wrong or right way to grieve, that everyone experiences grief differently and you shouldn't feel guilty about the way you deal with things. Um, there is no pressure in the bereavement course to, to, to say anything and um, you're never put on the spot. The bereavement course um, covers the, the stages of grief um, which I hadn't been previously aware of um, and it also um, allows you to explore emotions um, and physical effects on your body that, that grief has and it helps to normalise them so um, if you're wondering about doing the course but aren't sure, I would say just try it. You won't regret it. When some time has passed, I will definitely do the course again. A massive thank you to Pete and Jill. The Bible Course is an accessible way for anyone to explore the world's best seller. Because the Bible is a big book, it can be hard to know where to start. So the Bible Course gives the big picture, showing how all of the events, books and characters fit together to form one incredible story. Whether you are new to the Christian faith or just want to find out more, the Bible Course is for you. Well, good morning on this Easter Sunday. There are two readings in the lectionary for today, and one of them is said to be compulsory, so I'm going to read both. The first one is from Mark chapter 16, beginning at verse 1. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who is crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter. He was going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Just going to give a short reflection on this passage from Mark, as well as the one that I'm going to read later from Acts. Trembling and bewildered, 
The women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. I don't know about you, uh, but certainly in the past year or so since uh, coronavirus became a regular thing that we've been talking about in our society and enduring as we've gone through this pandemic, they were afraid. Obviously, they were afraid for lots of reasons. And we might be afraid for lots of reasons. We might be afraid of dying. We might be afraid of catching the coronavirus. But Jesus says later on, and also in the Bible many times, it says, do not fear. Because if we believe in Jesus, we know that we have a hope in the future life to come. We should not be afraid. But clearly here, the women were afraid. They were afraid for lots of reasons, because... They could have been persecuted. They could not really understand what was happening and going on. But they were also given an instruction to go and tell his disciples and Peter. Peter, of course, later became the great evangelist. Peter, of course, we know denied Jesus a few times. And we, of course, deny Jesus sometimes. So if we have during the past year or so, been afraid, we're in good company. If we have denied Jesus a few times, then we're also in good company. We know that the first disciples had their faults, but we also know that because of them, we have the gospel to proclaim now. May you know his peace and presence at this time. Amen.
And the reading from Acts chapter 10, beginning at verse 34. Then Jesus began to speak. I now realise how true it is that God does not show favouritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He has risen, which is what we'll be singing outside on the Vicarage lawn. But for those watching online, here's a short reflection on Acts 10 and Easter Day, of course. We need to remember that God is in charge, God is in control. And I think this passage in particular echoes that, doesn't it? We need to remember the context of this passage written by Luke, of course, who wrote the book of Acts, as well as the Gospel of Luke, Peter began to speak and said, I now realise how true it is that God does not show favouritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. Peter is preaching in the house of Cornelius, a man who bowed down and revered Peter because he suddenly got the message that Peter was giving him. And the message is in essence the gospel. God does not show favoritism. That's a really important thing to understand. An old friend gave me this mat. Jesus loves you, but I'm his favorite. Nice sentiment but totally the wrong message. Because of course, God does not have favorites and we shouldn't either. Secondly, God sent to the people of Israel announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ. When we know Jesus, he gives us peace. Who is Lord of all. That's the important thing. We need to know that if we say Jesus is Lord, then we will have a heavenly place with him in the heavenly realms when we die. We should not fear death because if we know Jesus as Lord, we, know have, we have the eternal life to come. Thirdly, God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power. It was all God's doing. God the Father sent his Son to die on the cross for our sins. That's the key thing about Christianity. We are all forgiven. We all make mistakes. I know I do, but we are forgiven because Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, fourthly, comes to continue to heal us if we need his healing, whether from relationships that are fractured or from physical things, we can still ask Jesus to heal us. Of course, ultimate healing comes 
from knowing Jesus and being with him in eternity. The power of the devil was less because God was with him. God was with Jesus and he is with us. And I hope and pray he's with you this Easter Sunday. In Jesus' day, when a carpenter completed a job, it was customary for him to wash his hands, dry them on a linen cloth, fold it and leave it on the top of his work. That cloth was his trademark. Whoever inspected it knew the work was finished. When Jesus said, it is finished on the cross, he was echoing his life's work. And on Easter Sunday, we know that Peter saw the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head folded up by itself and believed. Scientists say that infallible proof comes from getting the same result from repeated experiments and multiple confirmations. Here are five infallible proofs that Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus rose from the dead. And that's central to the Christian faith. First, Mary Magdalene encountered him. Second, the woman at the grave saw him. Third, the disciples talked to him. Fourth, the apostles met him. We need to remember that our faith is an evidence-based faith. Over 500 people witnessed Jesus after his death. He presented himself alive. And these are truths. He was seen by them. Christ's resurrection is the foundation of our salvation and the hope upon which eternity rests. Paul writes, Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again on the third day and was seen by Cephas and then by the Twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remained to the present. And after that, he was seen by James and then by all of the apostles. That's the important thing to remember. And then by, of course, Paul himself, as he says in 1 Corinthians 15. I don't know if you know the story at an Easter service in Bangladesh. The congregation wept at the crucifixion scene in the film that they were showing of Jesus. And then suddenly a little boy at the back jumped up and shouted, don't worry, he gets up again. I've seen it before. So we need to rejoice and remember it's Easter. He got up again and we will too. And that is the hope for our nation and our church as we start to regather and rebuild the church of Christ here on earth. We must remember that we are witnesses of everything that God is doing in our lives, both now and has done before. God raised Jesus from the dead. And God chose you and me to be witnesses. And finally, we must remember that God appointed Jesus as judge of the living and the dead. We mustn't judge other people's faith or behaviour because only God is the judge in Jesus. What we must do is remember that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. So why not just join with me saying this prayer? If you've never said it before, then this might be the first time you say it. Or if you have said it before, then it might be you're just saying it again to remind yourself that Jesus died on the cross for your sins to give you new life and a new hope. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, 
I'm sorry for the things that I've done wrong in my life. And just take a few moments to think of those things which you've done wrong either today, in the past week or so, or perhaps since last Easter. Please forgive me. I now turn from everything which I know is wrong. Thank you that you died on the cross for me so that I can be forgiven and set free. Thank you that you offer me forgiveness and the gift of your Holy Spirit. You might want to just hold out your hands. Come, Holy Spirit, fill me again. Please come into my life through your Holy Spirit. And be with me forever. Fill me with love for my fellow brother and sister and love for those around me. Fill me with your joy, peace, patience, faith, gentleness. Self-control, come Holy Spirit, shukha not abhor at your spirit, veni sancto spirito. Thank you, Lord. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. May you know Jesus' peace and forgiveness as he has risen. Alleluia. Amen.
And so with the joyful message of Easter in our hearts, we pray to Jesus, who is present with us to eternity. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry and nourish us all with your word. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, be with us and all who follow you in the way. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us. Jesus, good shepherd who gave your life for the sheep, recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick. We pray especially at this time for Jill Bowles, Edna Higley, Sarah Hepworth, Sue Williams, and all those known to us who need our prayers. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. Raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us. Accept our prayers and be with us always. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.
Thank, thank you, Lord, for this day. Keep us safe while we sleep tonight. Bless all those I love and give us a good day tomorrow. Amen. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. And the blessing of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always.